Hey guys, I have here a brand new Lito Kala 18650 battery charger. So we got the manual. And here is the charger. It did not come with a power adapter. There were a few options for the power adapters and I just picked none because I wanted to save a few bucks and I've already got 12 volt power supplies. So what we're going to take a look at today is a very common statement I see being spread around several forums and DIY groups. And that is that the uh, Opus charger tests 10% higher in terms of capacity versus the Lito Kala. Now I don't know why people keep going around saying this because I haven't seen any evidence thus far. I haven't seen anybody doing tests and comparing the two chargers uh, to see if they actually do test higher. Uh, it seems just to stem from a few people who noticed it seems like their Opus tests higher. But we're going to hopefully either disprove or maybe we'll prove that today. We'll see what happens. Uh, so like I said, this is an Opus. This is the BTC3100. And the way we're going to test that is I have uh, eight cells here. These are old stock cells, but they are uh, new. They haven't been cycled many times. These are out of the Pagtron modem batteries from Battery Hookup's website. These are extra that I had left over from my solar generator project. And you'll see I have each one numbered one through eight. So what I'm gonna do is put four cells in the Lido Kala, four cells in the Opus. I'm gonna test each batch three times, and then we're gonna switch the cells and test them three more times. And then we're gonna compare the results. Um, this is very similar to the Megacell charger consistency testing I did a while back. So before we get started with this test, uh, there's another myth that we need to point out the Opus charger will test four cells at 1,000 milliamps each. That means it will charge and discharge those cells at 1,000 milliamps. Um, and actually, if you use these two far channels, so this one here and this one here, uh, you can actually get 2,000 milliamps uh, charge and discharge. But uh, that's only if you're running two cells. Once you put all four in, you can no longer select a 2,000 option. The Lido Cala charger can charge at 1000 milliamps, but it can only discharge at 500 milliamps. And I'll show you why this is a bit confusing later, but let's take a look at the manual for this charger first. So you'll see here in the specification parameters, it says lithium battery charging current, uh, and the options are 300, 500, 700, or 1000. Discharged current, 250 or 500. Now it's not as clean cut as this, because if you read further for the NOR test mode, the NOR test mode will charge, discharge, and then charge your battery, and it will report back the capacity. So when you're capacity testing cells, you want to make sure you're using the NOR test mode. And this is referred to as the charge test mode on the Opus. Your, the options you're given are 300, 500, 700, or 1000 milliamps. If you select the 300 or the 500 milliamp setting, it's going to automatically set your discharge current to 250 milliamps. In order to get the 500 milliamp discharge current, you have to set the current to 700 or 1000 milliamps. This is just plain stupid. I don't know why somebody would select 500 milliamps current and not want 500 milliamps discharge. But that's the way this is. So we're going to have to select the 700 milliamps on this charger so we can test our batteries at 500 milliamps. All right, so we'll plug in the power cord for each charger. So now these Lido Calas are a bit different than the Opus. On the Lido Cala, the positive end goes near the bottom of the charger. On the Opus, the positive end goes near the top of the charger. So we're going to put our four cells in. Okay, so this is number one. And you'll see when the screen comes in, we'll push mode until we get down to NOR test. And this is what catches a lot of people over here is you can select the current up to 1000 milliamps, but again, this is not 1000 milliamps discharge. That is only charge current. So we're going to select the current option of 700 milliamps, which will charge our battery at 700 milliamps and then discharge at 500 milliamps. Now we're going to do the same thing with the Opus. So we'll put this on charge test. And we're going to leave this one set on the 500 milliamp setting. On the Opus, that means this will charge the cells at 500 milliamps and discharge them at 500 milliamps. So already we have a consistency problem between these two chargers because this charger is incapable of charging and discharging at 500 milliamps. 
you know, whether or not that could be the difference of the 10% that people are saying, I doubt it because the difference is on the charge side, not the discharge side. Uh, but you never know. The 700 milliamps could mean it's shutting off a little bit earlier than this charger and not doing the proper constant voltage, constant current. So I'm going to go ahead and run this test. I'm going to do it three times and then I'm going to switch, like I said. And then we'll come back and we'll show you the results. And if we do see a discrepancy between these two chargers, uh, I'll also test a couple of the cells with my iCharger X6. Um, so we have a third set to compare these two with. But the main difference I want to see here is to either debunk or prove the myth of the Opus charger tests 10% higher than the Lido Kala. So yeah, we'll be back. It's probably going to take a few days to get through all this, but uh, hopefully we have some results soon. All right, so the third batch finished up here. You can see the capacities on here if you switch through the slots. 2521, 2550, 2554, and 2611. And I got the Opus up here. Here's the capacities from the third test of the Opus. We got 2660, 2508, 2542, and 2544. And here were the results from the first two tests. Uh, once we finish all six, I will put these in a spreadsheet and show you them all together. But yeah, it's time to swap the cells from both chargers and run it again. So this is interesting too. Uh, I just put cells one through four in the Opus charger. And I didn't even select charge test mode yet, and I see they are charged between 4.22 and 4.3 volts. I only point this out because I know some people have been bashing the Opus and the Megacell charger because it charges above 4.20 volts. However, it looks like the Lido Kala does the same thing because the Lido Kala was the last charger to charge these cells. Alright, so these are the results from the first six tests. You can see in the first three that the Opus definitely has a smaller amount of variance. And by variance, what I mean is the high cell minus the low cell. So for example, if you look at cell number one, the highest cell was 2522 and the lowest cell was 2506. So that works out to a difference of 16. And that's what I mean by variance. I'm not sure if there's a statistical word for that or not. And then in column G here, you'll see the average of the three tests. So then after I switch the cells, we're over to uh, columns I through K and I calculate the same variance and the same average. And then in column N, you can see the difference. So for cell number one, this is saying that the Opus tested 2.5% higher than the Lido Kala. For cell number two, the Lido Kala tested 0.4% uh, higher than the Opus. So then if you look down here at rows 11 and 12, the average variance for each charger. So on average, the Lido Kala had a variance of 26. That means the high minus the low cell averaged about 26 milliamp hours different and the Opus averaged 33 milliamp hours different. However, what's interesting in this data set that I want to point out is you'll notice in the first round of Opus tests, the variance was very small. Uh, we're talking between three and 13 milliamp hours. However, in the second round of tests, the variance um, anywhere from 34 to 67 milliamp hours. So this got me thinking because after test number three, I took these cells and then moved them to the Opus. So these cells in test number one were last charged by the Lido Kala. So as I pointed out earlier, the Lido Kala charged them slightly above uh, 4.2. They're at 4.22 to 4.23 volts. So then in sheet number two down here, you'll see I actually decided to run a fourth test. And that's interesting because it actually gave me an average variance of 33 for both the Lido Kala and the Opus. Uh, which is kind of funny considering when I compared the Opus to the Megacell charger, I had the exact same variance for both chargers. However, we still have the issue of the variance of the Opus being higher than the second round of tests from the first round of tests. So I thought, okay, maybe I'll discard the first round of testing because these cells weren't originally charged by the charger for which they are being tested in. Uh, meaning that the Opus cells were last charged by Lido Kala and the Lido Kala cells were last charged by the Opus. So if I discard test number one, You'll see the variance in the second round of Opus tests drops substantially and matches the variance from the first round of Opus tests. And the Lido Kala variance is slightly smaller than the variance in the first round of tests. And then that drops the average variance for the Opus to 10 milliamp hours and the average variance for the Lido Kala to 27 milliamp hours. So I feel these results here are a very reliable reflection of the variances between the Lido Cal and the Opus chargers. Um, however, I did want to include all of the test results. That way it doesn't look like I am manipulating the data. You're more than welcome to look at whichever results that you would like. Looking at just tests two through four, we can see that there is no substantial difference between the Opus and the Lido Cala. So let's see, if I do the average difference from all eight cells, let's see. 
On average, the Lido Cavill tested 0.07% higher than the Opus. These chargers test nearly identical Opus versus Lido Cavill when testing with a discharge current of 500 milliamps. So yeah, I think this more than proves that the Opus does not test 10% higher than the Lido Cavill. And I really wish people would stop saying that because I do really like the Opus. After having used the Lido Cavill, I don't like the Lido Cavill at all. I may keep it just for future projects and comparisons, but I'm certainly not going to be testing my cells with it, especially since it will not test at 1000 milliamps, and I test all of my cells at 1000 milliamps. Now, I did say I was going to do a round of testing with the eye charger. However, my eye charger is currently cycling my 300p and 120p packs for a supplementary video coming after this one in a few days. Uh, so I don't really want to interrupt that testing, but, uh, but I may do a comparison of the Opus versus the eye charger in a follow-up video. If there's anything you think I missed out of these tests and you'd like to see that in a follow-up video, please let me know and I can include that as well. I haven't decided whether or not I'm going to do it. I guess it depends on the feedback I get from this video. So yeah, I hope these results were helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And thank you very much for watching.